Saturday afternoon in Grand Forks, North Dakota. We're heading over to the event for Acceptance and Peace organized by a bunch of local artists in support of the Juba Coffee Shop, which was arsoned last week as a result of presidential candidates like Donald Trump uh, calling for all Muslims to be banned from the country. While our own governor has recently advocated for fearing Muslim immigrants. Um, outside of Juba, fundraisers online, and a lot of artists decided to do something as well. And so um, I just jumped online and asked other artists if they wanted to be involved in doing a fundraiser. And I know they already raised so much online. I, I don't remember who started the online fundraiser, but um, even with insurance, there's a lot of things that we think probably weren't covered. So we're just trying to get a little bit more money to help them out and show them that, that we welcome them with open arms. A couple of things. We've just gotten a video message from... Ifram Mansour. Uh, from, uh, based out of Minneapolis? Yep. Dear America. Dear neighbor, I came to you with only the clothes on my back, a heart full of hope, and an open wound ready to heal with the right home, the right education, and the right family. I found that home, that education, that family right here next to you. That we have to be the acceptance that we want to see in this world that we have to create the kindness that our world is in need of now, that we have to uphold the justice that will allow our children to live in a world filled with many voices and cultures, as will be our legacy. Whatever the atrocity in the world, it begins with us. It all starts with that heart. And once you understand that, then the, 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 the issues, the atrocities don't happen. Now you come together to celebrate life instead of the destruction of life. <laughs> Perfect. Adam Kemp is an artist and educator in Grand Forks. He's also an immigrant from the UK. And if you've ever seen these fish around town, you know his work. That's nice work. And believe me, I am the kind of mean-spirited individual that if you weren't doing nice work, I'd point it out to the whole class. If you come here expecting cultural sensitivity, you've got a bit of a shock. It's whether you can prove yourself or not. And I don't know who you're proving yourself to. For your generation, you might get to prove yourself to Donald Trump. And you're welcome. <laughs> the immigrant story is non-stop. My response is actually more about the fact that somebody's business was attacked. And I always find it rather funny that as an immigrant, sometimes people say things like, go home. And it's like, well, wait a minute, this is my home. What the hell does that mean? You want me to go next door to my house where I live? I mean, I, there aren't many immigrants who don't think it's their home. So, you I, can't control it, but you can control your response. Yeah. If you let the hate determine the discussion, then you've kind of given more power to hatred and fear than you probably should. What happened at Juba was it was for a purpose, because out of that brought all this. Out of that brought awareness of love, out of that brought awareness of compassion, so it was necessary for that to happen. It's a reason for that, and out of that is going to sprout seeds of love everywhere, guaranteed. In other words, if you don't like the conversation that someone's having about a situation, then you change it. Because ultimately, uh, my response to people doing something destructive is, you can do whatever you want, but I'm going to keep doing this. That's it. Um, the more we talk about this, the more we discover the truth about ourselves. And it may not be what we think it is.